Welcome to our lecture online and our next example is going to use the double integral technique on polar coordinates. What we have here is a function called r equals cosine of 3 theta and if you remember how to draw that it looks like a three leaf clover like this and what we're trying to find here is the area of one of the three leaves. How do we do that? Well we first need to define an area element, a dA, and we're going to take, since this is in polar coordinates, we're going to take a what we call a little element like this which has a length dr, a small little change in the direction of r, that's the polar direction r, and a small little width. Now of course this is part of a, if you think about it, this is part of a circular shaped object and if you want to find a small arc length that would be the radius times the angle. The angle is going to be a small d theta and the radius is going to be r from there to there so the the arc length here is going to be r d theta and when you multiply the two together you get the area dA so dA is r dr d theta and that's our area element. What we're going to do then is we're going to integrate it twice first from 0 to the edge right here of the leaf defined by the radius r and then next we're going to we're going to integrate over the width here in angle. Now how far is that? Well it turns out if we think if we go 30 degrees let's say if theta is equal to 30 degrees which is equal to pi over 6 then we can say that the cosine of 3 times 30 degrees is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees which means 0. It means if we move a distance from 0 angle to 30 degrees we go from r equals 1 all the way down to r equals 0. So that means we have to go from minus 30 to plus 30 degrees or from minus pi over 6 to plus pi over 6 but what I prefer to do is multiply times 2 and only go from 0 to pi over 6. So we do a half a leaf and multiply times 2. Makes the limits a little bit easier. At any rate, we can say that the area is going to be the double integral of the dA and of course the first limit we're going to go from 0 to the final range r, so from 0 to the outer limit r, and r is defined by the cosine of 3 theta, so r is going to be the cosine of 3 theta, and then we're going to integrate from 0 to uh, pi over 6, but we have to double that, so r is going to be twice that, because I'm going to take half the area of the leave and double it, multiply times 2. Alright, so that's the plan. So the area is equal to the double integral, the r limits are going to go from 0 to the cosine of 3 theta, and the uh, theta limits are going to go from 0 to pi over 6, and of course I have to multiply times 2 because I'm only finding the area of a half a leaf, so multiply times 2, and the dA is going to be r dr d theta, which means I'm going to integrate over the r variable first. When we do that we get the following, so we have a is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 6, that's for the theta limit, times the quantity r squared over 2 times, or evaluate it from 0 to cosine of 3 theta d theta, like that. Okay, so when we plug in the upper limit, we get cosine of 3 theta squared, plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so we don't have to worry about the lower limit. So we can rewrite this here. So we say that the area, therefore, is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 6 times the quantity cosine of 3 theta squared divided by 2 d theta. Now here we have a little bit of a problem. How do we integrate the cosine of 3 theta quantity squared? I think what we need to do here is find a good trig identity. For example, the cosine of, let's say, um, a squared is equal to 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2a, which means if I use the same kind of identity, I can say that the cosine square of 3 theta is equal to 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 6 theta, just simply double the angle like that. All right, if I can do that, I can rewrite this equation or rewrite what's underneath the integral sign like that. So I have a is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 6. I still have the 1 half here, so I might as well bring that out. And then I have 1 half 
times 1 plus the cosine of 6 theta d theta. All right, I have another 1 over 2 here. I can bring that out as well. So I end up with 1 half times that. So the area equals 1 half times the integral from 0 to pi over 6. So 6, 1 plus the cosine of 6 theta d theta. I think the best thing to do here is to break that out into two separate integrals. Let's, let's do that. So area is equal to, and I have so little room, I think I'll continue over here. So area is equal to 1 half times whatever comes next. I'll just take the 1 half out. I'm going to integrate this here. So the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of 1 times d theta, which is simply d theta, plus the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of the cosine of 6 theta, d theta. Now there's one thing I still need here. Since it's the cosine of 6 theta d theta, I need a proper differential here. I need a 6 d theta, which means I need a 1 sixth in the front of that to compensate for that. All right, now I think I'm ready to integrate. So the area, oh, I need the closing parentheses here. So area is equal to 1 half times theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 6 plus 1 sixth times the integral of the cosine, let's see, sine-wise, the, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, therefore the integral of the cosine is the sine, so it would be the sine of 6 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 6. Closing parentheses. All right. When I plug in the upper limit here on the first one, I get 1 half times, I get pi over 6 minus 0 when I plug in the lower limit plus 1 6 times, okay, the sine of 6 times pi over 6, that would be the sine of pi, the sine of pi is 0, and the sine of 0 is 0, so here I end up with 0 minus 0. So that simply drops out, and I'm left with the area is equal to pi divided by 12. And that's the proper answer for the area of one of the leaves of a three-leaf clover defined by the equation r equals cosine of 3 theta. It all comes down to finding the proper area element. So whenever you work in polar coordinates, the proper area element would be r dr d theta. Simply dr is the change in r, and r d theta is a small arc length. Radius times the angle d theta gives you the arc length. Arc length times this length gives you the area of that. You know that r is going to be defined by cosine of 3 theta, so your limits are going to go from 0 to r when you integrate in the r direction. r then will be limited by cosine of 3 theta, which becomes the limit of your first integration in the r direction. So you integrate r dr, becomes r squared over 2 times d theta, your limits from 0 to cosine of 3 theta. Unfortunately, because it's squared, you end up with something that's difficult to integrate, but luckily, by using the proper um, identity, we can make that a lot easier to integrate when we write it like this. And then finally, we have a equals 1 half times this integral, which we can split up into two integrals. The first one is simply the integral of d theta. The second one is easy to integrate when you get the proper differential. Make sure you compensate for the 6 over here. And at any rate, it goes to 0 anyway. We're only just left with that portion of the integration. And that's how you do those double integrals using polar coordinates.